Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining. I am Carrie Merriam. Welcome to another episode of Embodied Enlightenment. Woo! I am already so jazzed up for the individual that is coming on the call today. Paul Thompson, has, he's built an online business empowering six, seven, and even eight-figure business owners to create and sell online courses. Specifically, he's helped dozens of entrepreneurs at all levels to share their expertise in the online space, to scale their business, and to make money while they're at it. He's an Australian native, which you will hear in just a moment because his accent is amazing. And he's currently living in Bali as well as traveling the world. He was most recently featured in Forbes, Go Fall, um, as well as Thrive Global. And he's the founder of the online course Creators Hub, Paul. Thank you so much for being here. Wow, that sound, thank you so much. Uh, that, that intro, it just reminded me, like, imagine walking out on stage one day and just having that, like, going in, like, some big music or something. Just, oh, that's awesome. I'm really impressed and happy to be here. I, yeah, feeling really good tonight, and uh, I think we're going to have a pretty good chat. Thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for inviting me. Um, it's an honor always to, to meet people who are doing uh, really exciting and exceptional things. Um, building their own businesses and serving people in a in a bigger way, like bigger than themselves. I, it really impresses me. And so, yeah, I really appreciate you inviting me on. Such an honor because there are so many individuals that are going to be listening to this podcast and be able to gain such knowledge and wisdom um, that you can bestow on us. So I want to jump right into it. And we know you know that we've talked about this a little bit, but most of the people that are listening to this podcast are like myself. They're healers, they're yogis, they're in this space of conscious development, and they're probably already working towards an online course or program or really have the desire to because they have so much wisdom and so much knowledge. So if they're brand new, they haven't even started to kind of dip their toe into that space, which can be very scary for us yogis. Like there's a lot of resistance around technology, but also really around just showing up online yeah. and yeah. recognizing that we have so much purpose and power and passion that we can offer to the world. Yeah, I, and I, I completely understand where you're coming from, and I, I know uh, like the the battle between uh, being present and, and showing up and, and marketing and trying to sell uh, yourself online and kind of balancing that with, hey, I'm actually driven by a higher purpose here, and I really, really want uh, like this is my calling. I want to help these people. So I find the balance there. Uh, I understand. So then. I think if you think of it as being um, using technology to uh, empower you or as a catalyst or as a vehicle to get your message further, wider to more people, I think that there is like a way to kind of flip the switch and kind of move from the, um, like the, the, the mentality that I, sh I should be withholding here and, um, you know, keeping it very like centered um, versus like, hey, I actually need to be uh, getting myself out there. So in terms of, yeah, I don't know. I think that's probably one of the ways that I would, I would flip the switch um, and push past that. I love it. Um, it's very simple to the same teaching of using your mind as a tool to empower you versus allowing your mind to run the show of your life. Mm -hmm. Don't allow technology to be person that's running the show like don't give your power to technology use technology as a power yeah yeah and and it's not um a lot of you see like so many um like young girls and boys like because I, I used to be a school teacher so um i've seen it all firsthand onto social media and they're just so caught up in this vanity metrics and they've got such a uh, disproportionate view of themselves and their purpose and they're just gauging it off what these platforms are kind of sending back to them so i understand the struggle that they're going through uh but as a as a person or as a thought leader in this space as someone who is serving more people um than just themselves i think using like the technology to to harness exactly what you do and amplify it is it's just so powerful like there, there is you are in no no better time in the history of the planet than to be right right now and giving yourself through technology like you've never had the experience or the the possibility to reach as many people as you do now 
So I think of it as, as something that's really exciting. And if I was a, a yogi or in that space, like that's exactly what I would be doing. I would just be preaching it from the hilltops. I'm, yeah, I'm a huge, huge uh, advocate of technology. Um, while it has its, its ups and downs, I think it is, it, it is going to be the, probably the best used resource uh, in my life. And it's what I will eventually use like for my kids and try to help them um, along in the world. So, yeah. I love it. Thank you. And it's so true. I mean, we are so blessed to live in this time because knowledge is just a click away. Yeah. It's just a click yeah. away. Like we can, we have access to things that we've never had access before, but in the sea of knowledge, how do you as an individual get your message heard to the right people? Yeah. So, um, in the field of work that I do, um, so basically creating courses for online entrepreneurs or business owners who often have a service based industry, um, or an information product, something like that. Um, I help them create the course to reach more people, right? Um, we are some of the most powerful teaching and I, you probably get the same thing, but some of the most, some of the things that light me up is working one-on-one -on -one with someone. I really love having a connection with someone, building that relationship, seeing them grow, helping them. One-on-one -on -one is, is something that really uh, lights, lights my fire. I really enjoy it. However, um, for me to be able to have the time and capacity to reach more people one-on-one -on -one and to do the deep work with uh, people that I can build a relationship with, I still need a sustainable business. You know, I still need a platform that is going to generate revenue and profit for me so that it, I can continue doing the work that I really want to do. And so that's why courses um, right now are just absolutely blowing up. Uh, you see a lot of people turning to packaging up their services in an online course. And this is the, this is probably a profound kind of notion, but just because of the space that you and your listeners in are in, you probably think, wow, this is such a profound uh, topic. How could I ever package that up into a course? Every single industry that I work with has the same question, right? You ask a marketer, like I work with marketers and they want to have an agency. They're like, but Paul, how do I package up marketing into a course? Or you get even more niche. They uh, like have worked with relationship coaches. Like, but it's relationships. How do you package that up into a course? Because they see this, this huge sea of knowledge and they've got all of this skill and they're like, they feel like a course is something that's going to take away from the overall experience and distill it down into just a sliver of what they could offer. And so what, I, what my advice is, don't think of it as like a, a culmination of your, your entire life's work into one course. Uh, a course is something traditionally that people can take to be able to um, be taught or be shown um, how to overcome uh, a, like a, a, how to learn a new skill or piece of knowledge to kind of overcome a problem or to grow, develop, transform. Like that's, that's universal. That's across every course topic every subject area, whether it's um, like intuitive work, whether it's marketing, whether I've done like an eyelash extension course, right? It's the same, like it's the same thing. Uh, so my advice then is um, really have a think about before you start doing a course, you have to know who you're serving. Uh, most of the people you serve that come into your kind of, uh, uh, kind of reach uh, have an awareness of spirituality. If you have no awareness of spirituality, then they're not going to find you, right? They're just, they're, they are, it's going to be very hard to make that connection. So they at least have an awareness. So you know that the people that you are serving have some kind of an awareness, uh, maybe are curious to, to know more about it. Um, like that's one kind of uh, level of client or customer or student, whatever you want to call them. The other level is the ones who are just want to go all in. They have found that they've just absolutely passionate driven like this is that this is it right this is my my everything so there's always going to be different types of clients in every field of work uh, so what you have to do with your course is have a think about which type of your client or audience I don't know what do you call them clients or customers or students so use that term collectively right so which which um, audience client that you want to serve uh, and kind of nail it down exactly what their expertise are. Like, where are they on their journey? Are they advanced or do, are they just aware? Um, have they done training before? What kind of skills do they have before you even create the course? 
once you have that piece, you know exactly who you're serving and that is fundamentally the whole purpose of a course. The purpose of a course isn't to make something that's going to sell. Like that, if you do that, you won't sell courses and you will not have a very long history, uh, a career in course selling. That's the same across the board. So if you're going with the purpose of who I am going to serve, right, then you are driven for a higher purpose in yourself and people will find that more valuable. So then the question is, like, what do you teach them, right? And here's the, this is the part, like, you don't have to teach them everything in one course. That's not how it's designed to be. Like people study content for years and are still on the path to learning, right? It's, it is just a perpetual uh, cycle of like learning a new skill, being accomplished, going for the next thing. So um, that is development, right? That is growth. And we are all on that path. Uh, and so the question of like, what do you want to teach is, it can be broken down. It's really wordy. Bear with me. Um, so you can like pause this or rewind it if you're listening back. So here's the question that I get to ask, like all of the clients that I work with in every industry, I ask them, what is the one skill or piece of knowledge that you expect your students to have learned once they complete your course? So I'll go back again. So what is the one skill or piece of knowledge? So Just what's the one, one thing? Yes, hear me out, hear me out. Hear me out, yes, yes. So what is the skill or piece of knowledge? So the, 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 the knowledge uh, can be a broader topic. So the skill might be, um, uh, I don't know, like... Um, well, I teach, I, for a, example, ex expanded consciousness. Like that's like, sure. that's a big concept. Sure. So how, but this is the thing, like right? it's, it's a huge concept and how, how long do you think it would take for someone to have... Uh, the experience or the knowledge to say, yes, I feel confident and comfortable in like in that, right? It takes forever. It takes ages. That's a lot of work in there. So trying to bundle all of that into a, into a course, into an eight week course, like that's not possible. Right. So, so don't try because you're just going to be underserving the people that you're selling it to and you're going to be selling yourself short. You won't feel fulfilled. You will always feel a little bit like, Oh gee, I should have done more. I could have done better. I could have given them more. But you're trying to fit this this huge profound topic in the constraints of a of a vehicle or a tool or product that is just trying to get them to incremental steps, mm. right? So so undo that thinking and just go to the incremental. So the question: So what's the skill or piece of knowledge you expect them to learn once they finish your course? So now you know exactly who you're serving. You know their skills and their expertise. Then you know exactly what you want to teach them. So the way that you go from here to a course is sorry just first the way you go back from here to a course is what steps does this person need to take in order to get to the end of your course like to that piece of knowledge those steps are your lessons mm. like that's that's how simple it is they're in sequential order it's chronological those steps are just the milestones that these people have to go through to get to the skill or knowledge or the, the understanding of the skill or knowledge that you want to teach bundle those up into similar groups, you've got your modules. So now you have your entire course laid out. You have your modules, your lessons, you know what you're going to teach and you know who you're teaching it to. The rest just is, is just smooth, right? Because you, are, you already have the, the knowledge inside of you yourself, right? This is the profound thing. People think course creation is really hard and overwhelming. It is when they're trying to put everything inside the course. There is always a fear of, I don't know enough yet um, or I don't think I'm smart enough to be teaching a course or I don't know if anyone will buy it. I don't know if this is even something that they want. So there's all this like self doubt and fear driven um, kind of thought patterns that, that go into creating a, a pretty sizable product or, you know, um, uh, tool like this. If you just take the, take a moment, right? Just take the time to have a think about like, who is it you want to talk to or teach uh, what do you want to teach them and what do they need to do to get to that point? You just take away the block, that huge wall. Cause you just look at me like, how am I ever actually going to do this? Right. If you yeah. step it backwards, like, I, know, I know the feeling like yeah. I am, I am so empathetic to that, that proverbial wall where you're just like, I don't even know where to start. Well, I actually yeah. feel the opposite. I feel the opposite issue. I mean, if you want to use me as an example, like I, yeah feel like I connect it to source directly and I was channeled through and I wrote like a 200 page manual just like that. And then we shot like 200 hours of video and 56 yoga classes and 56 meditations and like 
And now we're div I'm dividing that into three different courses on this path to expanded consciousness. But what gets me tripped up? And I know who the individual is because it was me four years ago, right? I'm yeah. teaching the, the avatar yeah. is me four years ago. It's someone that is yeah. right on this cusp of really understanding what they want to do in their life. It's someone that has a career that things feel really good within their everyday existence, but they know deep down that th there is something that still needs fulfillment because the clarity isn't concise enough to understand what they're meant to do on this planet. And I, so where I'm getting tripped up is within the messaging because it is still such a broad topic. So the, what they gain is witness consciousness. Like, right, that's the first step of the path to expanded consciousness. They have to just become the witness and the observer in their life. So they gain that skill, but it's still within all aspects of their being. So it's still a huge topic that I'm like, how do I message this? What most people say to me when they, they work with me even on the one day intensives, they're like, I have no idea how to explain what happened today, but it's changed my <laughs> life forever. Like this is, this is consistent. Like, I don't know how to tell people what happened. Cause I like talked to God and found out my purpose. Like, I don't know how to tell people like you did this methodology. So yeah. Help. So, <laughs> that's, okay. Yeah, that's okay. And you, you know, hmm. first of all, I'm really, really impressed. Uh, that is, that's incredible that you have come so far in your own spiritual journey. So I, I admire you for that. I think that's, that's, you're, you're really lucky. So I, yeah, that's awesome. Uh, second of all, um, again, thinking of it as one, one product is probably not the, or three courses is probably not the, the best way to get to messaging, right? Because you're still thinking them, thinking of those as three individual assets that you're, you, you can use as a vehicle to kind of get people um, to where you want them to go. But if you group them all up, what you're creating is, is, a, is a space, is an environment, not like physical, but there, there is a, I don't know what you call it, like I can't articulate it, but the, yeah. yeah, you're creating a space for these people to, 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 to have these experiences, to grow and learn and develop. So you are, you are, you are focusing on the courses and not that end goal transformation and like the, the what's coming after the course. People don't buy courses. They don't, they buy solutions to their problems. Mm. Like that's, you know, people don't wake up out of bed in the morning and go, gee, you know what? I would love to buy a course on like, I don't know <laughs> how to make money off Facebook ads today. This, this is the best thing ever. No, they wake up and go, gee, oh, this, this room is looking a bit shabby. Like I feel embarrassed. I'm with my husband. Like I really want to be able to provide my family. Uh, I know my kids are going a little bit hungry at school. I just wish I had more money in the house. That is their problem. They buy a course to solve that problem, to get more income into their house, to make their family financially stable. They don't think about buying the course, right? So, you know, through sheer experience and through the experience of others, the transformation that you are, um, that you are, that you are, what would you call not, not giving that you are facilitating, you know, in a way, um, or that you are giving the space to happen. So you understand that when you think about you four years ago and you think about, or even you eight years ago, right. Even earlier in your journey, like how much, um, you might've struggled in those different kind of areas of your life. And you're like, I just, I needed some other sign. I needed some other guidance. I needed to solve what I was feeling or like how, you know, the struggles that I was having. When you solve those problems through the end goal transformation of your course, that's how you get the messaging across, right? It's go back earlier. You know, people work, work is hard. You know, when, when, when you told someone like, Hey, you have to really work hard to grow a business or you have to really work hard to make a relationship beautiful and abundant and fruitful. You have to work really hard to look after your kids. When you say that it's it, people get, you get resistance. People are like, well, I don't want it. I just want the really quick thing. You know? And that's just their like innate, for the majority is their innate like um, reaction. So overcome that by giving them like skipping that part. Like don't tell them they have to work hard because that's their journey, right? That's, that's for them to do. You have the ability to show them what the end goal is. You have the skills and the, 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 like the talent, the, the, I don't know, the gift basically of being able to kind of take them through that and show them that and experience that. 
selling them the end result is going to be the difference between you know you messaging this correctly and being able to serve way more people than you could have ever imagined and you being stuck like hey i have these products or this assets that i just don't know how to sell because right? you're not selling the products like you're selling the end goal so uh, yeah once you make just that subtle shift you'll even find that your incoming like traffic and leads and people coming into your life they will just pop up and they will just click like they will know exactly what they're coming to you for like because i'm sure now people will uh, probably a little bit vague they're like i don't i know like kind of what i need but i don't really understand or being able to articulate it like that's that's like a bit of a sign that like hey yes you, you need help i can support you like i know what to do here but they're still lost right imagine if you just gave them the point a to b like imagine if they came to you and they're like you are the one that i need like i show me Right. And that just comes to messaging because they're going for the transformation. They understand what that abundance and that gift is on the other side. So yeah, that's how I would, I would overcome that one. I have some homework to do after this, <laughs> after this podcast. <laughs> so good. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. I just, I just enjoy, um, I enjoy the whole, psychology of of transformation and growth kind of thing like i was i think i was honestly i think i was born a teacher but you know from the very beginning uh i think about when i grew up to like my career to what i do now i just love teaching uh, and i and it comes in different forms in life um right now it's in a form of teaching people about like courses and business development and products but it's teaching them in a way it always comes down to just just the, the growth of another human being. Like I feel so grateful that I have the ability in so many areas of my life to just help people be better. Right. And they can have more financially better or like they just feel better about themselves. I don't know. And I, and I love like teaching them how to do that for themselves. So yeah, this kind of, this kind of stuff, this kind of way of like marketing, selling products, all of that, it's just another iteration of, of me just trying to make people like give them the opportunity to be better. So yeah, thanks for the opportunity. I love it. I feel the same exact way. Like I, if there was one thing that I could do for the rest of my life and that I will do, it's just teach and serve. And I think, you know, that comes in with the feminine and masculine though. Like I, I find myself pushing against these things. I'm like, no, the universe will just take care of me. And it has, um, yeah. like the speaking gigs will just come and they do. And they're like, I'll have the, I'll have the opportunity to be in front of hundreds of people. And they do. And like, it will just all work out and it does. But then there is this other part of me that says, well, how many more people can you serve? And I'm so ready to serve. And I'm sure so many people that yeah. are listening are also really ready to serve more individuals. And it's such a beautiful time as well in the universe, I think, that we're shifting into this new online space, utilizing technology, utilizing connections. I mean, you and I met through Facebook. How cool is that? Where yeah. we can just yeah. come together and spread positive vibrations and share each other's stories of how we can make the world a better place. So I, yeah, I know. I think we do. I, I, I think, I think we're onto something, right? I, I feel oh, yeah. really yeah, lucky. I like I feel lucky. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. I just, I don't know. It's, it's so weird. Um, trying to, uh, I, it actually makes me feel really great that I can kind of connect with someone who's on the same page, right? And kind of understands because uh, I, these aren't the conversations that I usually have with friends in the gym. Right. So, uh, but I mean, they still know me as like, Hey, this is Paul. Like he's really like fun. He's loving. He's, he helps everyone. Like this guy is awesome. And they get that feeling of like, I'm, I'm there, like just at positive vibes and energy and helping them, but they don't understand like the drive behind it. Right. And yeah. So I, I appreciate being able to kind of put this into words. So yeah, I, I really enjoyed that. Thanks. The evolutionary process of the human spirit, the human soul, is we come here as a follower and then we shift into a messenger, bringing people with a message to other people's spaces, platforms, experiences. And then we evolve into a builder where we are ready to build and bring the people to us to experience evolutionary transformation. And you are clearly a builder, and so am I. And there are so many more builders, it feels like right now, which is such a huge indication on where the world is moving. 
So many of us concentrate on all of the negativity that's happening. I think because of technology and because of the ways in which we can share information, we are focusing our perception in one direction, which is the not extension of light. <laughs> dark. Yep. Yeah, exactly. But on the flip side of that, what we can also be so present to is how many individuals like you, like myself, like all of us that are coming together to create this light warrior vibration is that there are so many of us that are here and ready to build. So thank yeah. you for giving I, the masculine space and grounding and technology and the hand holding that so many of us need to actually build it. <laughs> Yeah, I, and I that's that is something that I I really love doing, and I I admire and like being masculine. Like I absolutely love the feminine energy. I like am just attracted to it. It's like that's the whole kind of drive, right? Um, and so when I am surrounded by, uh, or when I can empower or just like flow with like really really um, like pe people who are just in tune with their feminine energy that just lights me up. Right. Cause it just like whips around me. I'm like, wow, like this is, this is awesome. I can just be the rock and just everything happens around. And it's just, well, yeah. Shiva and Shakti. Yeah. There you go. Huh. I don't know if you know who Shiva and Shakti are, but it's, I know Shiva, they got, yeah. Yeah. Well, Shakti is the feminine and she's so Shiva is the rooting and Shakti yep. dances around him, around the spine. Yeah, yeah. It's the serpent. It's the serpent up the spine. Kundalini, same energy. That's why the fusion of masculine and feminine is so powerful in the next evolutionary mm. stage of all of our lives is, is this. Because mm. with this, how much more power can we create? I, I want to find out. I, I want to <laughs> I wanna keep going. Like, I want to I wanna see there's the masculine drive. Like, I just want to keep, keep building. Like, I want to I test it. I want to build. I want to I wanna keep driving. So. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So one more question. Sure. If there is one message that you need to offer right now, one thing, what would it be? Hey, well, uh, basically I get, um, I get really um, uh, like caught, not, not triggered because triggered has a bad stigma kind of thing, but my, my uh, response gets uh, triggered when I see people um, self doubt and put themselves down and say like, oh, I'm not actually smart enough to do this yet, or I don't have the skills to be able to build this or, um, I, I don't think I'm good enough to be able to, you know, do this or so many other people are doing it. Like that just like tweaks in me. And I just think like, you have no idea how competent and capable you are and powerful and abundant that you are like in that moment. Right. Cause there are people that are looking up to you and admiring you. Like we're all on different stages of our journeys. Right. And they're just skills. They're just skills that people have acquired. And so by you just dropping yourself out of that, that the opportunity just because of the fear of I'm not going to be accepted. I'm not going to be loved. I'm going to do something wrong. I'm going to, you know, um, I'm not going to be good enough. If, like, if I can just like flip that and just say, just before you drop out next time, just, just stop, catch it and just, just sit with it and just feel it first. Okay. Is this really true? Right. And, or is this just a projection of like my own fear? Before you make any like, oh, I'm going to quit, I'm going to give up, I'm going to step out, just stop and sit with it and just really feel into like why it actually is that you are thinking that and you will just have it. Like in my experience, it just flips like because it just washes away. You're like, huh, that was just like a, like a, yeah, it was just going off like it's memory of one time that it happened here or like oh, someone, someone said this to me another time. Like it's just this, this belief that other people are better than us. And, and I don't know. I just think we're all just as powerful and perfect as we are. Like, yeah. So that would be my message before you quit next time. Just stop and just ask yourself, like, why, why are you feeling this? Yeah. Amazing. Where can people find you if they want oh, to yeah. see you or get more of your knowledge? Sure. Just in the coffee shop at Changu. Uh, <laughs> come down where in Bali. No. Um, so I am, I'm, I'm pretty much all over the internet. Uh, usually Facebook is kind of where I, I hide out. Um, if you type in uh, at the Paul Thompson, uh, yeah, you, you'll find me on most platforms. Um, yeah. And just say hi. Like if you, if you just kind of want to be 
get some high vibe, like masculine energy. Like I am so approachable and, and we'll kind of talk with everyone who reaches out. So if you have any questions, anyone who's listening, just say hi. Um, just, just let me know. Like a three day window from the amount of messages. <laughs> yeah, we talked just, about boundaries, soft boundaries. Yeah, we yeah, talk, boundaries. You know, yeah. know that it might take <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I promise I'll get back to you. But uh, no, you also but genuinely. Have a product out as well. If if people want to create their own online course, right? How can people find out exactly. about that? So again, um, at thepaulthompson.com uh, is my website. Uh, and you can kind of get a feel of exactly what I do because it's kind of hard. This is a fairly new uh, space that I'm in. I mean, not a lot of people that I know of are coming in and helping or empowering these entrepreneurs to build and sell their own courses. It's a bit of a mystified gray area at the moment. So again, with your messaging, it's really funny. Like I, I have the same kind of um, the same hurdles to overcome, right? With like, how do I message this? So, but yeah, I build courses for other people, essentially, you know, I just help them get with the curriculum side of things. And then I put it in online, make it all work in the back end, all this magical technology. And then I just uh, help them sell it, setting up marketing and sales funnels and strategies. And that's what I do. And that's what I love. So good. Oh, so good. Well, I just can't say thank you enough. Thank you so much for being here. I, I appreciate it. This was so, um, yeah, like so uplifting. Like I just feel really, really good. Uh, so I appreciate it. I appreciate uh, the energy, the conversation, but intellectual, uh, spiritual. It, it was awesome. I, I very, very much am grateful. Yes, conscious connections, conscious conversation. Oh, yeah. Uplifting the consciousness of the world, right? Well, thank you everyone so much for listening. Make sure you click on the links below and go check out Paul as well as give us yeah. feedback and we will touch base with you next week. All right. Bye. Bye.